of that wind. March is coming in like a lion. Grace, you should come over here and look out. See the way the wind's blowing things all over town. Now, I wonder why I can't get that operator to answer. I bet the bus will be late. I bet it won't. The roads are okay as far as here. It's up ahead they're having trouble. I can't even get the operator to answer. Probably has more calls than she can handle. I bet the bus doesn't have many passengers. Probably not. But we gotta stay open even if there's only one. I shouldn't think anyone would take a trip tonight unless he absolutely had to. Elma, are your folks gonna worry about you? Oh no, Daddy said before I left home, he bet this had happened. And you better come over here and help me, because that bus will be here any minute. We gotta have everything ready. Nights like this. I'm glad I have a home to go to. Well, I got a home to go to, but there ain't anyone in it. Where's your husband now, Grace? How should I know? Don't you miss him? No. If he came walking in now, wouldn't you be glad to see him? You ask more questions. I'm just curious about things, Grace. Well, kids your age are. I don't know. I guess I'd be glad to see him. If I knew he wasn't going to stay very long. Don't you get lonesome, Grace? When you're not working down here? Sure I do. If I didn't have this restroom to keep me busy, I'd probably go nuts. You know, sometimes at night, after I empty the garbage and I lock up and I turn out the light, I get this sort of sick feeling in my stomach. Because I sure don't look forward to walking up those stairs letting myself into an empty apartment. Gee, if you feel that way, why don't you write your husband? Tell him to come back. Because I was just as lonesome when he was here. Never really was much company. Except when we were making love. But being lonesome is one thing, making love is another. Most of the time, me and Barton is usually fighting. I guess my folks get along pretty well. I mean, they really seem to like each other. I know all married people aren't like Barton and me. Not all. Now maybe I can get that operator to answer. No, quiet as a tomb. I like working here with you, Grace. Do you, honey? I'm glad. Because I sure don't know what I'd do without you. Weekends especially. You know, I dreaded the job at first. Why? Thought you wouldn't have time for all your boyfriends? Maybe you'd have more boyfriends if you didn't get such good grades. Boys feel kind of embarrassed when they feel a girl is smarter than they are. So what should I do? Flunk my courses? Should say not. You're a good kid. You've got good sense. Wish someone could have reasoned with me when I was your age, but I was a headstrong brat. Had to have my own way. Well, I had my own way, all right. And here I am now, a grass widow running a restaurant. I'll probably die in this little town, and they'll bury me out by the back house. You girls been able to use your phone? No, we all heard it on answer. That means all the lines are down. About time for the Topeka bus, ain't it? I do now. Well, you're gonna have to hold them here. I don't know how long. Highway's blocked between here and Topeka. May take all night to clear it. Yeah, I was afraid of that. They, they got the highway gang out working on it now. The telephone company's trying to get the lines up. But March is coming in like a lion, ain't it? Yeah. That station house is cold. You got any fresh coffee? I there? just went through. Well, fresh as you can want it. A storm like this makes me mad. <laughs> no, it does. It makes me mad. It's like all the elements have just lost their reason. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about a storm like this. Maybe it's just because I'm a sheriff, but I like to see things in order. Ah, uh, let the wind blow. I just pray to God to keep a roof over my head. That's all a person can do. Here it is. You better fill those water glasses. Now, remember, the donuts are left over from yesterday, but it's all right to serve them. And we got everything for sandwiches except cheese. We ain't got no cheese. You never got cheese, Grace. Well, well I guess I'm a little self-centered. I don't care much for cheese myself, so I never think to order it for anyone else. <laughs> Gee, I'm glad I'm not traveling on the bus tonight. Who's driving tonight? This is Carl's night, isn't it? I think so. Yes, it is. Elma, honey, remember. I always serve Carl. Sure, Grace. <laughs> Well, you may be here all night. What? A 
highway is blocked up ahead. You can't leave until it's cleared. Carmody, what am I going to do? I'm going to go tell Carl about the delay. What am I going to do? Whatever am I going to do? There's a little hotel down the street. Are you taking for me, you name? What's the trouble, miss? You a policeman? I'm the local sheriff. <laughs> but everyone likes him, really. Well, uh, I, I, I ain't asking to have anybody arrested. But who said anything about arresting anyone? What's the trouble? I need protection. What from? There's a man after me. He's a cowboy. Um, where is he? He's on the bus asleep, him and his buddy. And I jump off the bus a minute, stop to make my getaway, but there's no place to get away to. He's gonna be in here in a minute. And you, you just gotta make him let me be. You met him on the bus? No, I, I met him in, in Kansas City. I work at the Blue Dragon nightclub there down by the stockyard. And he come in with the annual rodeo and him and his buddies was at the nightclub every night. And every night there was a fight. And the boss says he ain't even gonna let him come in when they come back next year. And he followed you on the bus? He put me on the bus. I'm being abducted. Abducted? But you took time to pack a suitcase. Well, I was going somewhere else trying to get away from him, and he'd come along and he'd pick me up and put me on the bus, and I didn't have anything to say about it at all. Where's he plan on taking you? He says he's got a ranch in Montana. He says we're going to get married as soon as we get there. And you're against that? Well, I don't want to go to no godforsaken ranch in Montana. <laughs> If this cowboy is really trying to take you against your will, I'll just have to stop him from it. You don't know this cowboy. He's mean. Well, I reckon I can handle him. Now, you just sit down and relax. I'm going to be around most of the night, and if there's any trouble, I'll put a stop to you. You're safe with Will here. Will is very respected around here. He's never lost a fight. What are you talking about? I'm, of course I lost a fight. Once. Grace always said you were invincible. Well, there ain't nobody that's invincible. And the sooner a man learns that, the better off he is. See, a good fighter's got to know what it's like to get licked. That's what makes the difference between a fighter and a bully. There's gonna be trouble. Feel it in my bones. <laughs> oh! behind here so he won't seize it when he comes in. I'm not going to tell him that I, I'm not going to go to Montana with him. I'm just going to let the bus pull out and then he'll see that I'm not on it. That's all I can think of to do. Well, you needn't worry with Will here. Think so? He looks kind of evil, don't he? No, he's a very religious man. Would you believe it? He's a deacon in the Congregational Church. My folks was holy rollers. Could you give me a cup of coffee, please, with lots of cream? Howdy, Carl. Did you bring this win? No, he brought me. <laughs> Thank you, the comedian. Now, the wind is doing 90 miles an hour. The bus is doing 20. What's your guess about the roads, Will? Well, they got the highway gang out, but it's going to take a few hours. Telephone lines down, too? Yeah, but they're working on them. Driver, it seems to me that we're still in the state of Kansas. Is that right? What do you mean, still? We've been in the state of Kansas about a half hour. But I don't understand. I was told when I left Kansas City, I'd be across the state line immediately, and now I find... You're pretty that... anxious to get across that state line, too, wasn't you, Jack? Why, whatever do you mean by that? Nothing. Anyway, you're across the state line now. In case you didn't know it, Kansas City is in Missouri. Are you joking? Well, there is a Kansas City, Kansas, too, but you got on in Kansas City, Missouri. So that's the trouble with you Easterners. You don't know anything about any of this country west of the Hudson River. Come, come now, don't scold. Carl, let me take your coat for you so you can get warm by the stove. Nymph in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. I'm sorry your bus is held up. Now, is that a nice way to greet me? Um, After my loving greeting, all you can think of to say is, I'm sorry your bus is held up. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'd much rather sit here and look into the innocent blue of your eyes and continue riding on that monotonous bus. Don't you have to get somewhere? I have a ticket for Denver, but I don't have to get there. I never have to get anywhere. I travel around from one town to another just to prove to myself I'm free. Now, the, the bus probably won't get into Denver for another day. Ah, oh, well. And what is our next stop? Topeka. Topeka. 
Who, that's where the famous hospital is, isn't it? Oh, yes, the Meninger Clinic. It's a very famous place. Lots of movie stars go there for nervous breakdowns and things. <laughs> Does the town offer anything else in the way of diversions? What's the capital of Kansas? It's almost as big as Kansas City. They have a university and a museum and sometimes symphony concerts and plays. Well, I go over there every Sunday to visit my married sister. Don't they have any Indian tribes around here that still hold war dances? No, silly. We're very civilized. Well, I'll make my own judgment about that. Meanwhile, you may fix me up a, a, a double shot of rye whiskey on the rocks, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We don't sell drinks. You don't sell drinks? Not intoxicating drinks, no, sir. Oh, alas. We have fresh coffee, though, uh, homemade cakes and pies, all kinds of no, sandwich. No, 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 my girl, you're not going to sober me up with your dainties. I have come prepared for such emergencies. <laughs> You may serve me up a bottle of your finest lemon soda. You better not let Will see you do that. You're not supposed to. Who's he, the sheriff? Yes. Now, lots of people do spike their drinks here, and we never say anything. But Will, it has to make you stop if he saw you. I shall be most cautious, I promise. I don't remember your car all driving and whatever. <laughs> yep, March is coming in like a lion. Is this all the passengers you got? Well, there's a couple of crazy cowboys rolled up in the back seat asleep. I thought it woke them, but I guess I didn't. Should you go out and do it now? Well, I'd just soon meet them where they're at. One of them's a real troublemaker. You know the kind. First time off the ranch, wild as a bronco. Been on the make for this little gal down here. She was telling him. Had half a mind to put him off the bus the way he's been acting. I say there is a time and a place for everything. That bus is going to get snowbound any time. I'll go out there and wake him in a minute, Will. Just let me have a little time here. <sighs> this is the first time you and I have had more than 20 minutes together, Grace. So what? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll probably be here most of the night. Sure would be nice to have some nice little apartment to go to. Some place to sit. Listen to the radio with a good-looking woman, something like you, talk with. Maybe have a few beers. That wouldn't be a hint or anything, would it? Why? Do you have an apartment like that, Grace? Yes, I do, but I don't recall ever telling you about it. Did that ornery Dobson fella tell you that I had an apartment over the restaurant? Uh, Dobson. Dobson. No, I, I can't seem to remember anybody named Dobson. And no one better than I do. He comes through here twice a week on the Southwest bus. He says you and him meet sometimes in Topeka and paint the town. Dobson. Dobson. Oh, yeah, I know Dobson. Vern Dobson. <laughs> well, if he's been gabbing to you about my apartment, I can tell you he's only up there once when he come in here with his hand cut and I took him up there to bandage it, and that's the only time that he was ever up there on my word honor. Vern Dobson speaks very highly of you, Grace. Very highly. Well, he better. <laughs> well, you have. Make it a ham and cheese on rye. I'm sorry, Carl. We ain't got no cheese. What happened? Did the mice get it? <laughs> None of your smart <laughs> remarks. Okay, make it a ham on rye, then. Oh, Carl, we ain't got no rye, either. I didn't vote for that, sir. I just ordered rye myself and was refused. Listen, mister, don't you think you ought to lay off that stuff till you get home and eat the missus? The missus, do you say? There is no missus, sir. I am free. I can roam the universe with no one to await my arrival anywhere. That's all I ever get on my bus, drunks and hoodlums. That's for whole week. Okay, make it whole week. I am free, you know. My third and last wife deserted me several years ago for a ball player. Your third? Yes, my third. Getting married is a careless habit I've fallen into. Sometime, really, I must give it up. Oh, but she was pretty, like you and the young girl over there. She was Southern, too, or at least pretended to be. However, she was kinder than the others when we parted. You see, she didn't care about money. All she wanted was to find new marital bliss with her ball player. So I never had to pay her any alimony, as if I could. And my second wife was a, a different case entirely. But she's very pretty, too. I have always exercised the most excellent taste, if not the best judgment. She was a student of mine when I was teaching at a small college back east, but alas, she sued me for divorce on grounds that I was incontinent and always drunk. 
I never had the chance to resign that position. Hey, how much is them donuts? I'll make you a special price. Two for nickel. Okay. That time of year thou mayst in me behold when the yellow leaves or few or none do hang upon those boughs. Whew, I never was so cold in all my life. Do you honestly work in a nightclub? Sure. I'm Chantusi. Call myself Cherie. That's French, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I just seen your name once and it kind of appealed to me. It's French. Oh. It means dear one. Is that all the name you use? Well, sure, that's all you need. Like Hildegard. She's a Chantusi, too. <laughs> Chanteuse. It means singer. How come you know so much? Well, I'm studying French in high school. Oh. I never made it as far as high school. See, I was the oldest girl left in the family after my sister Violet ran away. I had two sisters, both younger, and I had five brothers, most of them older, and were they me. Anyways, I had to quit school when I was 12, stay home and take care of the house and do the cooking and stuff. I'm a real good cook. Honest, I am. Did you study singing? Mm -mm, I just kind of picked it up listening to the radio and going to the movies and trying to put over my songs as good as them people did. <laughs> How'd you get started in the nightclub? I won an amateur contest in Joplin, Missouri. I won the second prize. A couple of boys won the first prize. They juggled milk bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's fair? To make an artistic performer compete with jugglers and knife throwers and people like that. No, I don't. Anyways, the second prize was good enough to get me to Kansas City to the real big contest there. And I didn't win no prize or nothing, you know, but it got me the job at the Blue Dragon. Is that where you're from? Joplin? <laughs> no. Joplin's a big town. I'm from a real little town, about 100 miles from there, River Gulch in the Ozarks. We lived there till three years ago this spring. The <laughs> floods come, washed us all away. Gee, that's too bad. I don't know where any of my folks are now except my baby sister Nan. We all just separated when the floods come. And I took Nan with me down to Joplin, and she got a job as a waitress, and I went to work at Liggett's Drugstore till the amateur contest come. Well, it must be fun working in a nightclub. It ain't all roses. You'll be here for a while, Will. All right, then. Well, I'm going to go out and... Send them cowboys in here now and leave you to look after them. <laughs> well, I'll do my best. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll tell you something else, too. Well, I'll be jiggered. So you better keep an eye on him, too. Well, ain't you coming back, Carl? <clears throat> well, uh, tell you the truth, Will, I get so darn stiff sitting behind that wheel all day. I just thought I'd go out for a long walk. In this blizzard? Are you crazy? Well, no. That's the kind of fellow I am. I often go for a long walk in the rain and snow. Freshens a fellow out. Sometimes I walk for hours. You do? Yeah, for hours. Just the kind of fellow I am. <laughs> Can you imagine going for a walk on a night like this? It's really a good night for one, Will. It really is. <laughs> he said he was going to wake him up, and he'll be in here in a minute. You won't tell him anything that I said, will you? Oh, no, cross my heart. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Yeah, that's one of my favorite sonnets. It is. Do you read Shakespeare? I studied him in school, in English class. I love the sonnets. I remember some of them myself. I used to know them all by heart, and many of the plays I could recite in their entirety, and often did for the entertainment and annoyance of my friends. <laughs> Last fall, I memorized the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. A boy in class played Romeo, and we presented it for convocation one day. Oh, I wish I had been there to see. Well, I went to school. We didn't study no Shakespeare till the ninth grade. And then in the ninth grade, everybody got to study Julius Caesar. But I only made it to the eighth grade. <laughs> but I seen the movie with Marlon Brando. I sure do like that Marlon Brando. Madam, where is thy locking bar? <laughs> 
I don't understand one word you say, but I sure love the way you say it. And I understand everything I say and privately despise the way I say it. That's so cute. <laughs> you know, I knew a fellow once who recited poetry. Whatever could have happened to him? I don't know. He left town. His name was Mr. Everett Brubaker, and he sold secondhand cars down at the corner of Eighth and Wyandotte. And he had the most beautiful Pontiac car with the top down, and he talked real nice. But I guess he wasn't any nicer than any of the others. The others? Well, you meet quite a few men at the place where I work, the Blue Dragon nightclub down the stockyard. You ever heard of it? No, and I deeply regret the fact. Oh. You're just saying that. Educated men like you wouldn't have no use for the blue dragon. I wouldn't. No. Hey, why didn't anyone wake us up? Virgin, I might have froze out there. Hey, shut the door. Hey, Jerry, how come you get off the bus without letting me know? Is that any way to treat the man you're gonna marry? Shut the door, cowboy. Uh, it's no way to treat a fella, Cherry, to slip off the bus like you wanted to get rid of him, maybe, and come in here and eat by yourself. Thought we'd have a little snack together. Well, sometimes I just don't understand you, Cherry. <gasps> For the hundredth time, my name ain't Cherry. Well, I can't say it the way you do. What's wrong with Cherry? It is kind of embarrassing. Cowboy! Will you have the decency to shut the door? What's the matter with you, mister? Are you afraid of a little fresh air? Why, man, you ought to breathe real deep, get your lungs full of it. That's the trouble with you city people. You get soft. He's the sheriff, Bo. Well, supposing he is the sheriff, what's that matter to me? I don't give him the right to insult my manners now, does it? No man ever had to tell me what to do, did he, Virg? Huh? Did no, he? no, but there always comes a time, Bo. My name is Bo Decker. I own me my own ranch up in Timber Hill, Montana, where I got a herd of fine Hereford cattle and a dozen horses and the finest sheep and hogs and chickens anywhere in the country. And I just got back from a rodeo where I won about every prize there was, didn't I, Verge? Yep. I'm the prize bronc rider and bulldogger and steer roper anywhere around. I won them all. And what's more, I had my picture taken by Life magazine. I'd appreciate you talking to me with a little respect in your voice, mister, and not go hollering orders to me from across the room like I some no-account servant. Did you ever see anybody like him? You were the last one in and you left the door open. You should have closed it. I don't care who you are. That's all I'm saying. Well, door's closed now. What you arguing about? Uh, looks like we're going to be here a while. Verge, help us some grub. Not right now, Bo. I'm chewing tobacco. Nah, so Verge for you. He's always happy as long as he's got a wad of tobacco in his mouth. Well, yeah, I'm going to have me a little snack. Miss, give me about three hamburgers. Three? Yep. How do you want them? I want them raw. Honest? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way to eat them, raw, with a thick slice of onion and some pickle lily. Okay. You sure you're not joking? Now, wait a minute, miss. That ain't all. I'd also like to get me some ham and eggs and some potato salad and, uh, and a piece of pie. I ain't so particular about what kind of pie, as long as it's got that meringue on top of it. Well, we have lemon and chocolate. They both have meringue. Lemon and chocolate. I don't know which I'd rather have. I like them both. I'll have them both, miss. Both? Yeah. I've set a quart of milk down here beside me. I'm still a growing boy. Traveling always picks up my appetite. Now, is that all you're gonna have? Just a measly donut? I ain't hungry. Why not? I just ain't. Well, you ought to be. Well, I ain't. Wait till I get you back to Susie Q. I'll fatten you up. Well, I bet in about two weeks' Bob. times you won't even recognize yourself. Doggone, <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. I love you, Cherry, Bob. just the way you are. You're about the cutest little piece I ever did see. When I walked in that nightclub place and I hear you singing my favorite song standing before that orchestra, looking like an angel, oh. I said to myself then and there, she's for me. I ain't gonna leave this place without her. Now, I got you. <laughs> ain't I, Cherry? Oh, there is people here and they're looking. But what if they are? It's no crime to show a little affection, especially since we're gonna get married. It's no crime I ever heard of. <laughs> Go, would you get your hands off me? Cherry, that's no way to talk to your husband. 
That is all you've done since we left Kansas City is maul me. Oh, is that so? Well, I certainly ain't one to pester any woman with my affections. I never had to beg no woman to make love to me, did I, Verge? I never had to coax no woman to make love to me, did I? No. No, no. sirree. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I got all the women I want. Don't I, Verge? I gotta fight them to keep them off me, don't I? Here are the hamburgers. The ham and eggs will take a little longer. Okay, these will give me a start. Alma, honey, I have the darndest headache. Oh, I'm sorry, Grace. Yeah, could you look after things for a while? Well, sure. Because the only thing I can do is just go upstairs and lie down. That's the only thing that's going to do me any good at all. What's the matter, Grace? Right? I, I got a headache, Will. It's just, it's driving me wild. Is that so? <laughs> you are now the mistress of the inn. You haven't told me anything about your first wife. Now, how could I have admitted her? What was she like? Oh, she was the loveliest of them all. I do believe she was. We spent such an idyllic honeymoon together. One golden month of sunshine and romance in Bermuda. But she sued me for divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty and persuaded the judge that she should have my house and my motor car and an alimony that I still find it difficult to pay because, you see, she never chose to marry again. She found that for what she wanted out of marriage, she didn't have to marry. But, of course, maybe I'm being unkind. Miss, was you waiting for me to lay them eggs? Oh, I'm sorry. They're ready now. These hamburgers is just a horse duvery. <laughs> oh, thank you, miss. Oh, doggone. Jerry, what do you want to bring your suitcase in here for? Jerry. I'm asking you a civil question. What'd you bring your suitcase in here for? Tell me. Now, now, now don't come near me, Bill. Tell me. What's your suitcase doing there behind the counter, huh? What are you trying to do? Fool me? Was you planning to get away from me? Is that what you've been sitting there planning to do? Oh, me, 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 get your hand off me, Bill. Tell me, Jerry. You tell me. Leave the little lady alone, cowboy. <laughs> Mister, you got no right interfering between me and my fiance. She may be your fiance and she may not. Anyway. You ain't gonna abuse her when I'm around, you understand that? Abuse her? I think it's time you tell her, miss, just how you feel about things. Uh, uh, what is this critter trying to say, Cherry? You better well, tell him now, miss. Well, uh, What do you two got planned, huh? Now, Bo, don't get mad. I'll get mad if I want to. What do you two got planned? Bo, I don't want to go to Montana and marry you. You do, too! I do not! <laughs> well, anyways, you'll come to like it in time. I promise you would. Now, we've been through all this before. Bo, I ain't going. What? I said I ain't going. Now, the sheriff here's going to help me, and he's not going to let you take me any farther. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to get the next bus back to Kansas City. You ain't doing nothing of the kind. Yes, I am, Bo. You got to believe me. I ain't going with you, and that's final. Cherry, we was familiar with each other. <laughs> that don't mean you gotta marry me. Well, I ought to take you across my knee and blister your little body. Don't touch me, Bo. Don't you pay no attention to what she says, mister. Women folk, they don't know their own mind. They never don't did. Don't you come near me, Bo. You're coming back to Timber Hill and marry you. Just think you wouldn't like the idea now, because uh, it's kind of strange and you've never been there. But in no time at all, you're going to be happy as a mud hen. Now, I ain't taking no for an answer. But, God, you're coming along. You get on that bus if she don't want to. Will you get that through your skull? Now, leave her be. Mister, this ain't no business of yours. It's my business if the little lady comes to me asking for protection. Is that right, Cherry? Did you go to the sheriff asking for protection? Well, well yes, I, I guess I did. What do you need protection for from the man that wants to marry you? Cause, Cause why? I said I loved you, didn't I? I know that you There, you see, I told her I loved her and I wanted to marry her. With a world full of crazy people going around killing each other, you ain't got nothing better to do than stand here trying to keep me from it? Well, you're overlooking one simple fact, cowboy. Oh, you're so smart. You tell me what I'm overlooking. You're overlooking the simple but important fact that the little lady don't love you. Bo! Bo, now take it easy, Bo! Bo, Bo! <laughs> 
Bullcat. Bastard, he said she didn't love me. Oh, pay no attention to him, Bo. Come on over here and sit down. You gotta say things over. Just let me be, Birch. And if you don't believe me, ask the little lady. Ask her if she loves you. I won't ask her nothing of the kind. Well, then take my word for it. I wouldn't take your word for a cloudy day. I'm telling you, she loves me, and I ought to know. Now, she ain't getting back on that bus, and we'll leave it at that. Now, you take my advice and take your friend here and have a nice, quiet game of pinochle until that bus gets on its way and takes you with it. Come on, do like he says, Bo. I think you got the little lady wrong anyway. Well, don't you say nothing against her? I ain't saying nothing against her. I just don't see any reason why you want to marry a girl. Says she don't love you, that's all. Besides, I kind of doubt she's as good a gal as you think she is. Come, come on over here and sit down. I don't feel like sitting. What shall I do with the ham and eggs? Uh, just put them on the stove, miss, and keep them warm. He'll eat them later. I don't think you'll be bothered anymore, miss. But if you are, my station's right across the road. You can holler. Thank you very much, I'm sure. You'll be all right, Alma? Well, yes, Will. I'll look in a little later. Okay, Will. I don't know why, but I always seem to relax more easily when the sheriff leaves the room. <laughs> I think it's awful unfair that people dislike Will just because he's a sheriff. But you see, my dear, he stands as a symbol of authority, that most dreaded figure of our time. Policemen, teachers, lawyers, judges, doctors, and I suppose even tax collectors. We take it for granted that they're going to punish us for something we didn't do, or did do. You said you were a teacher once. But not a successful one. I never could stay in one place very long at a time. I, I hated having anyone over me, like a department head or a dean or a president. And I never was a man who could take orders from anyone without feeling resentful. Right or wrong, you see, I always insisted on having my own way. What am I going to do, Birch? Oh, Bo, you got to quit depending on me so much. I don't know what to tell you to do except to sit down and be peaceful. I can't be peaceful. Well, all right, then. Pace around like a panther and be miserable. <laughs> believe it. What can't you believe? Oh, nothing. Bo, if you got something on your chest, it's best to get it off. Well, I, I just never realized that a gal might not love me. My last position was at one of those revolting little progressive colleges in the East where they offer a curriculum of what they call functional education. Educators, I'm sure, have despaired of ever teaching students anything. So I think they have figured that the second best thing to do is to understand them. And every day there would be a meeting of everyone on the entire faculty with whom the students came into any contact whatsoever from the president down to the chambermaids and we'd put our collective heads together and try to figure out why little Jane or little Mary wasn't getting out of her classes what she should. The suggestion that perhaps she wasn't studying was too simple. <laughs> but if, if you implied that she simply didn't have the brains for a college education, you were being undemocratic. You must have disapproved of that college. My dear, I've disapproved of my entire life. Really? <laughs> But I don't suppose I could resist living it all over again. Did you resign from that position? One day, I decided I'd had enough. I walked blithely into the dean's office. I said, sir, 
I graduated magna cum laude from the University of Chicago, studied at Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship, returned to take my PhD at Harvard, receiving it with highest honors, and I think I have the right to expect my students to try to understand me. <laughs> and what did he say? Well, I, I didn't wait for a response. I walked out the door and over to the railway station, where I purchased a ticket for the farthest place I could think of, which happened to be Las Vegas. I've been traveling ever since. Oh, it is a merry way to go to pot. <laughs> I might teach one day, but you don't make it sound very attractive. My dear, you suit yourself. Don't be influenced by me one way or another. You are such a lovely young girl. Thank you, Dr. Lyman. Didn't you tell me that you plan to go to Topeka tomorrow? You mean today? Yeah, I have a ticket to hear the Kansas City Symphony. They come to Topeka every year to give a concert. You say you stay with your sister there? Mm-hmm. And I take an early morning bus back here in time for school Monday. Then, after school, I come here to work for Grace. Didn't you tell me that they had a university at Topeka? Yes, Washburn University. Washburn University, of course. It occurs to me I might should stop off there and check some references on a piece of research I'm engaged on. Oh, I've been to the Washburn Library lots of times. You have? Perhaps you could take me there. Oh, well, Which I'm going to arrive in Topeka ahead of you, and I could meet the bus. If you really want me to. You could take me to the library, and perhaps we could have dinner together, and perhaps you'd permit me to take you to the symphony. Are you serious? Why, of course I'm serious. Why do you ask? Well, I don't know. Usually older people are too busy to take much notice of kids. I just love to. Then I may depend on it that I have an engagement. Yes, I think it'll be lots of fun. I can't wait. But my dear, let's not tell the others of our plans, shall we? Well, why not? Well, you see, I have been married and I'm somewhat older than you, though maybe not quite as much older as you might take me to be and people might not understand. Oh. So we'll just keep our plans to ourselves, promise? Okay. You think best. I think it best. It's a real party, Virg. Thank you, ma'am. Isn't there another way for me to get back to Kansas City? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the bus comes through here from Topeka, and it can't get through either until the road's cleared. I'm just getting kind of restless, that's all. Come on, fill this up for me, will you? Have a good old girl. Sure, Will. Going down the highway a bit, see how the men are getting on. Thought they might enjoy some hot coffee. It's a good idea, Will. Everybody behaving? Of course. Grace not down yet? No. I didn't see Carl any place around outside of here. <laughs> I don't suppose something could have happened to him. I wouldn't worry about him, Will. No. I guess he's able to take care of himself. Thank you, Alma. Oh, uh, Alma, if anybody's looking for me, I won't be gone long. That dang sheriff. If it wasn't for him, I'd get Cherry right now. And I... well, Where would you take her, Bo? There's a justice of the peace down the street. You can see a sign from the window. Oh, Bo, you can't force a gal to marry if she don't want to. You just can't do it. Now, that sheriff's a stern man. He'd shoot you in a second if he saw it as his duty. Why don't you go over there to that counter and have yourself a drink like the professor? I never did drink. I ain't gonna let no woman drive me to it. You don't drink, you don't smoke or chew. You gotta have some bad habits, Bo, to rely on when things with women go wrong. <laughs> Verge. I hate to sound like some pitiable weakling of a man, but... There's been times these last few months that I've been so lonesome, I just didn't know what to do with myself. It's no disgrace to feel that way, Bo. Well, how about you, Virg? Don't you ever get lonesome, too? <laughs> a long time ago, I gave up romance and decided to take being lonesome for granted. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Maybe I'm a sap. Why do you say that? Well, I don't know why I don't go to Montana and marry him. I might be a whole lot better off than I am right now. He says he loves you. He don't know what love is. What makes you say that? 
All he wants is a girl to throw his arms around and hug and kiss, that's all. The rest of the time, he don't even know I exist. But what made you decide to marry him in the first place? You ain't very experienced, is you? Guess not. Never did decide to marry him. Everything was going fine till he brought that subject up. Bo come in the nightclub one night when I was singing that old black magic. It's one of my best numbers. And he liked it so much that he got up on a chair and he started to holler like an engine. And then he put his fingers in his mouth like that and started to whistle like a steam engine. <laughs> and naturally, you know, made me feel kind of good because most of the customers at the Blue Dragon's too drunk to notice some songs. And you liked them? Well, yeah, I thought he was kind of cute. <laughs> I think he looks a little like Burt Lancaster, don't you? Maybe. Anyways, I'd never seen a cowboy before, you know? I mean, I'd seen him in the movies. I'd never seen one in the flesh. He was so darn healthy looking, I don't mind admitting I was attracted right from the start. You were? Yeah, but it was only what you'd call a sexual attraction. Oh. And the next morning, Bo gets up and hollers, Yippee, we're getting married. I thought he was crazy. <laughs> I tried to reason with him, you know, but he wouldn't listen to a word I said. He just stayed by my side all day long like a shadow. And at night, of course, he had to go back to the rodeo. But every night after the rodeo was over, he was back to Blue Dragon in time for the midnight show. And if some guy claimed to have a date with me, Bo would beat him up. And you never told him that you'd marry him? No. He kept telling me that him and Verge was going to be by the night the rodeo was over and they was going to pick me up and we'd start off to Montana together. And I knew that if I was there, that's exactly what had happened. So I decided to beat him. And one of the other girls that worked at the Blue Dragon, she lived across the river in Kansas, and she said I could stay with her. So last night, I go to the Blue Dragon. I only sing for the first show, and then I told him I was quit. I was going to quit anyway. And I pick up my share of the kitty, and darn it, I have to go tell him I'm taking a midnight bus. And, of course, they got to go tell Bo when he comes in a little after 11. So I go down the bus station. Haven't even got my ticket. Here comes Bo and Verge. And Bo just goes right up the ticket window. He goes, three tickets for Montana, please. I didn't know what to say. And then he picked me up and drug me off and put me on a bus. And I've been on it ever since. And somewhere deep down inside, I got the funny feeling I'm going to end up in Montana. <laughs> Verge, tell me something. We've been together since my folks died, and I always wondered if maybe I didn't spoil your chances of settling down. <laughs> no, you never, Bo. I used to tell myself you did, but I was just looking for an excuse. Well, you've been looking after me since I was 10. Well, I could have married up, too. Was you ever in love? Once, before I went to work on your daddy's ranch. Well, what happened? Nothing. Did you ask her to marry you? <laughs> no. Well, why not? Well, there comes a time in every fellow's life, Bo, when he's got to give up his own ways. How you mean, Verge? Well, I was always kind of uncomfortable around this gal, because she was sweet and kind of refined. <laughs> I was always scared I was going to say or do something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I know how you mean. Yeah, it's cowardly of me, I suppose, but... Every time I'd get back from court and get back in the bunkhouse where my buddies was playing cards or listening to music or just talking, I'd feel myself so much at home that I didn't want to give it up. Yeah. Gals sure can't scare a fella. Now I'm kind of ashamed. You are? Yes, I am, Bo. A fella can't spend his whole life depending on buddies. Why don't she like me, Verge? Well, now, tell me the truth. Well, maybe you don't go about it right. Well, what did I do wrong? Well, sometimes you sound a little bullheaded and mean. <laughs> I do? Yeah, yeah, you do, Bo. Well, how's a fella supposed to act? Well, I'm no authority, Bo, but I'd think you'd want to be a little more gallant. Ga gallant? I'm as gallant as I know how to be. You hear the way Hank and Orville talk at the ranch when they get back from sojourning in town about their women? You can't pay any attention to Hank and Orville, Bo. They like to brag. Is there any reason a gal wouldn't go for me as soon as she would for Hank or Orville? Well, 
they're a little older than you are. They learned a little more. They can be gallant with a gal when they want to be. I ain't going to pretend. Well, I can't blame you. But a gal ought to like me. I'm, I can read and write. I'm a kind of tidy. And I got good manners, don't I? Well, I'm no judge, Bo. I'm used to you. <laughs> and I'm tall and strong. Ain't that what girls like? And if I do say so myself, I'm pretty good looking. Yeah. I mean, when I get all spruced up, I'm about as good looking a fellow as a gal might hope to see. Well, I know you are, Bo. Well, then hellfire and damnation, why don't she go back to the ranch with me? Gee, if you only loved him. Yeah, that'd solve everything, wouldn't it? But I don't. I sure can't see myself going off to some godforsaken ranch in Montana where all I'd see is him and a bunch of cows. <laughs> If you don't love him, you'd be awful lonely. I don't know why I keep expecting myself to fall in love, but I do. Um, I know I expect to someday. You know, I, I'm beginning to seriously wonder if the kind of love I have in mind exists. What's that? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I've been going with the guy since I was 14. Honest? Honey, I almost married a cousin of mine. I was 14, but happy when it happened. Mm. I never heard of anyone married so young. Well, down the Ozarks, we don't waste a lot of time. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I didn't marry my cousin Malcolm because he turned out real bad, just like Pappy predicted. But I sure was crazy about him at the time. I've been going off in my head about some guy ever since. But Bo's the first one wanted to marry me since cousin Malcolm. And naturally, I'd like to get married and raise a family and all them things, but... But you've never been in love. Well, maybe I have and, and I didn't know. That's what I mean. Maybe I don't know what love is. Maybe I just keep expecting it to be something that it ain't. I just... I just feel that no matter how crazy you are about a guy, you gotta feel, it's, it's hard to put in words, you, you gotta feel that he respects you, that's what I mean. I should think so, and I want a man that I can look up to, but I don't want one that'll browbeat me, and I want a man to be sweet to me, but I don't want to be treated like a baby. I just feel that, that whoever I marry, got to have some real regard for me, apart from the love and sex. You know what I mean? I think so. Mm. What you going to do when you get back to Kansas City? I don't know. There's a hillbilly show on the radio stations there. I might get a job on that. Otherwise, I'll probably go to work at Liggett's or Walgreens. Then I'll probably marry some guy, whether I love him or not. I mean, who am I to go around insisting I be in love, huh? That's something you hear all about when you're a kid and you just take it for granted that such a thing exists. Maybe you have to find out for yourself that it don't. Maybe everybody's afraid to tell you. Maybe you're right. But I hope not. I sure hate to go out to that cold powder room, but I better not put it up any longer. <laughs> How defiantly we pursue love. Like it was an inheritance due that we must wrangle about with angry relatives in order to get our share. You shouldn't complain. You've had three wives. My dear, don't shame me. I love them all with a passion. Well, I thought I did at the time. I'm sorry if I sound sarcastic, Dr. Lyman. I didn't mean to be. Don't apologize. I'm too egotistical ever to take offense at anything people say. You're not egotistical at all. Believe me, the greatest egos are those that are too egotistical to show how egotistical they are. I'm sort of idealistic about things. I like to think that people fall in love stay that way forever and ever maybe we have lost the ability maybe man has passed that stage in his evolution wherein love is possible maybe life 
will continue to become so terrifyingly complex that man's anxiety about his mere survival will render him too miserly to give of himself in any true relation. Oh, you're talking over my head. I mean, anyone can fall in love. I, I always thought... If... Two people really in love must give up something of themselves. Yes. Love is a gift that men are afraid to make. Sometimes they keep it locked inside themselves forever, where it withers and dies, and then they never know love. Only it's facsimiles, which they seek over and over again in meaningless repetition. Gee, how'd we get on to this subject? Oh, my dear, pay no attention to me. Whether there is such a thing as love, we can always pretend there is. Well, let us talk instead of our forthcoming trip to Topeka. Tell me, will you wear your prettiest dress? <clears throat> oh, of course. It if it turns out to be a nice day, I'll wear a new dress Mother got me for spring. It, it's a soft rose color with a little lace collar. Oh, you look lovely. Lovely, I know you will. I, I hope it doesn't embarrass you for me to speak these endearments. No, it doesn't embarrass me. Well, I'm glad. You just think of me as a fatherly old fool, will you? And not be troubled if I take such rapturous delight in your sweetness and innocence and youth. For these are qualities I seek to warm my heart as I seek a fire to warm my hand. Now I am kind of embarrassed. I don't know what to say. Did you say nothing? Or nudge me and I'll talk endlessly about the most trivial matters. <laughs> <laughs> sure is cold out there. Birch, will you place another song? I think we all need something to cheer us up. I'll make you a deal, miss. I'll play if you'll sing. Let's have a floor show. Hmm. Well, everyone here can do something. A brilliant idea straight from Chaucer. You must read Juliet for me. Virgil, will you play for us? Well, I don't play no opera music or jitterbug. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> will you take part two? Oh, please. It won't be any fun unless we all do something. Yeah, go on, Bo. Miss, I never was no play actor. Well, you can say the Gettysburg Address. Well, I ain't gonna say it now. <laughs> How about your rope tricks? Your rope front out on the bus. I can get it for you easy enough. Oh, yes, please. Rope tricks would be lots of fun. I ain't gonna get up before a lot of strangers, miss, and make a fool out of myself. I guess he means it, miss. Oh, shucks. I don't know why you couldn't cooperate a little bit. I got too much on my mind to worry about doing stunts. You'll sing a song for us, won't you, Cherie? Oh, I will for a piece of pie and a cup of coffee. Okay. Bert. Hey, Bert, can you play for me? Uh, if you'll start that, I think I can pick up the card. And you'll read poetry for us, won't you? I intend to play Romeo opposite your Juliet. <sighs> Gee, I don't know if I can remember the lines. Sometimes one can find Shakespeare on these shelves amid the lurid novels of juvenile delinquents. Here we are. Four tragedies by William Shakespeare with my compliments. That's my seat. If I read it over a few times, it'll come back. Do you know the balcony scene? <laughs> Where you can have it. My dear, I know the entire play by heart. I can recite it backwards. I, I have a costume. Is there someplace I can change? Oh, yeah, right behind the counter. There's a mirror over the sink. Okay. She shines up to you like a kit in the milk. Gee, costumes and everything. Can I help it if I'm so darn attractive to women? <laughs> Shoot, Bo, it don't mean nothing. Maybe it don't mean nothing to you. She is just being nice to me because I was playing my guitar. Guitar music's kind of tender and gals seem to like it. Tender? Yeah, gals like things to be tender. They do? Well, sure they do. A fella gets tender and someone comes along and makes a sap out well, of him. Sometimes, Bo, but not always. You got to take a chance. Well, I always tried to be a decent sort of fella, but I don't know if I'm tender. Oh, well, I think you are. You know how you feel about deer hunting? You just never could do it. You couldn't anymore shoot one of them sweet little deers with the sad eyes and you could jump into boiling oil. 
Are you making fun of me? No, I'm not making fun of you, Bo. I'm just trying to show you you've got a tender side to your nature, same as anybody else does. Well, I suppose I do. Well, of course you do. Then why don't Cherry come over here and talk sweet to me like because she does to you? Because you've got a tender side to your nature, Bo, but you don't know how to show it. I don't. No, you just don't know how. Well, how's a fella go about showing his tender side, Verge? Well, I ain't sure I can tell you, Bo. Okay. Virgil, will you go first? It's all right by me. <laughs> okay, uh, then I'll act as master ceremonies. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Grace's Diner tonight presents its gala floor show of celebrated artists from all over the world. <laughs> the first number on our show tonight is that musical cowboy, Mr. Virgil... A blessing. Virgil Blessing, who will entertain you on his guitar. You misjudge me. Did you be quiet? The show started. I'm really a very tender person. You just don't know. I'm so tender hearted, uh, I don't go deer hunting. Because I just, I couldn't shoot them sweet little deers with the sad eyes. You can ask Burge. I ain't interested. You ain't? No. And furthermore, I think you're a louse for coming over here and talking while your friend is playing his guitar. You act like you thought more of Virgin than you do of me. Would you go away? Jerry, did I tell you about my color television set with a 24-inch screen? One million times. Now, shh, shh, shh. Oh, Bridget. 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 No, no more just now. I'm anxious to see the rest of y'all do something. A lot she cares how tender I am. That was swell, Virgil. Are you ready? I consider myself so. Oh, Virgil, will you be our prompter? Well, it's kind of funny writing, but I'll try. Oh, gee. What should we use for a balcony? No, that offers a problem. What is it these folks is going to do, Virg? It's Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Yeah, this Romeo was a great lover, Bo. Pay attention pick up a few points. <laughs> I'm ready. But soft, what light from yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness a playing of the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. Dr. Gerald Lyman will portray the part of Romeo, and I will play Juliet. My name is Elma Duckworth. Um, the scene is the orchard at the Capulet's house in Verona, Italy. This uh, counter is supposed to be a balcony. Okay. He just said scars that never felt a wound. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, oh, fair Romeo, sun. Romeo, and Romeo. Is... Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father, and refuse thy name. For if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I'll answer it. I am too bold. Bold? He's drunk. Hush. He's not the <laughs> to the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. I mean... Oh, speak again, bright angel. Thou art as glorious 
is to this night being on my head as is a winged messenger of heaven. I don't understand all them words, Arch. It's Romeo and Juliet, for God's sake. Now, will you shut up? Go back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and floats upon the bosom of the air. It is but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though, not a Montague. What's Montague? It is not hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus screamed in night so stumblest on my counsel? By a name. I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear Sadie, is hateful to myself. Uh, 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 be because it is an enemy to thee. My name. You say it is hateful to myself. Dr. Lyman? <laughs> Dr. Lyman, what's the matter? Oh, my dear, let us not continue on with this meaningless little act. Did I do something wrong? You couldn't possibly do anything wrong if you tried. Well, I can try to say the lines differently. No, 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 miss. Please just tell your audience that Romeo suddenly is fraught with remorse. Verge, if that's the way to make love, I'm going to give up. I'm afraid he isn't feeling very well. I tried the prompting. Well, we only have one more number. Are you ready? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, our next number is Mademoiselle Cherie. <laughs> that international chanteuse. Direct from the Blue Dragon nightclub in Kansas City, Cherie! <laughs> now, remember, I don't allow no table service during my numbers. Okay. <laughs> you ready, Vert? That all black magic has me in its spell that old black magic that you wave so well those icy fingers up down my spine the same old witchcraft when your eyes meet mine that same old tingle that i feel inside and then the elevator starts its ride and down and down I go, around and round I go, like a leaf that's caught in the tide. I should stay away, but what can I do? I hear your name. And I'm a flame, a flame with such burning desire that only your kiss can put out the fire. <laughs> You're the one. Ain't she beautiful, Birch? I'm gonna get her, Birch. I made up my mind. I told myself I was gonna get me a gal. That's the only reason I entered that rodeo, and I ain't taking no. Oh, you hush up and let me be. Anything I ever wanted in this life, I went out and got. Down and I ain't gonna down stop down now. Go well, get her, Virg! Love that spin, I mean, I do that old black magic call. Love. Ah! Cherry. And if I was a man, I'd beat the living daylights out of you. And that's what some man's gonna do someday, and I hope I'm there to see it. I was telling Virgil, I love you. You got no right.
got to come over there and slap me. Let me be. Now, we are going to go down and wake up the justice of the peace, and you're going to marry me tonight. Bert, help me. Shut help up. Me, I'll make Bert. you a good husband. You won't have nothing to be sorry about. Uh, uh, help. Come on. Help. Somebody help me. Help me. Get out of my way. Help you me. Know what I say. Please. Mr. I ain't having no one interfering in my business. Oh, 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 oh. Bro, you can't pick a fight with the sheriff. You just can't do it. Mr. Ain't no man ever got the best of me. Ain't no man ever gonna. Well, I'm ready and willing to give it a try, cowboy. Come on. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I knew this was gonna happen. I just knew that. Oh, gee, I better call Grace. What the hell is going on down here? Oh, Grace, they're fine. Oh, my, it all happens so suddenly. Let's see. Oh, I never meant to cause anybody this oh, much trouble. Well, Looks like Will Masters is getting the best of him. Oh, yeah, I'll put my money on Will Masters anytime. Oh. He's got it up here. Oh, look at that cowboy. He's green. He just swings out wild. Oh, I don't want to watch anymore. Oh, God, I'll have a good fight. Come on, Will. Will, give him the old uppercut. Come on, the uppercut will do it every time. Go, oh, look, look, look. Leo, what did I tell you? The cowboy's down. Yeah, Will's putting the handcuffs on him now. Uh, Will will give him first aid. He always does. <laughs> oh, you just got to admit he had it coming. Oh, I'm glad they got it set that side. Remember, last time we had a fight in here, I had to put me in a new window. It takes strong men and women to love. People strong enough inside themselves to love without humiliation. People big enough to grow with their love and brave enough to bear the responsibility of being loved and, and not fear it for a burden. I never had the generosity to love. I, I thought the gift would somehow lessen me. <laughs> Romeo! Romeo! Dr. Wyman! Dr. Wyman! Don't spot it with me! Dear girl, don't ever bother with a foolish old man like me. You're not a foolish old man. I like you better than anyone I've ever known. Oh, I'm flattered, my dear. But one of these years soon, you are going to turn from a girl into a woman, a kind, loving woman that could only pity me because I am a drunken, unruly child. And I have nothing in my heart for a true woman. Let me get you something to make you feel better. No, no. No, no. I shall seek the icy comfort of the restroom. <laughs> Alma, honey, what's the matter? What's he been saying to you? Miss, could, could you help us? The, the sheriff says that if you won't hold charges against Bo, he'll let him out to get on the bus if it ever goes. What well, for? So he can come back in here and maul me again? He won't do that no more, miss. I promise. You promise? What about him? I think you can trust him now. That's what I thought before. Nothing doing. He grabs hold of a woman and kisses her like he was Napoleon. Miss, if he knew I was telling you this, he'd never forgive me, but you're the first woman he ever made love to at all. Ha! I don't believe that. It's the truth, miss. He's always been just as shy as a rabbit. Oh, my God. Elma, honey. Now, you take my advice, and you don't go to Topeka or anywhere else with him. Oh, I won't, Grace. But honest, I don't think he meant any harm. He just drinks a little too much. Dr. Lyman? Are you all right? I'm an old man, my dear. And I feel very weary.
Let him sleep it off, Alma. It's all you can do. Grace, for Christ's sake, who puked all over the back house? Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, Verge. Let's go. I'm awful glad you're going to help him, miss. If you is fibbing to me just to get him out of jail, I ain't ever going to forgive you. No, it's no fib, miss. You're the first woman he ever made love to at all. Well, I don't believe I've ever had that off before. <laughs> Still then. I'll be glad when you all get out of here and I go to bed. I'm tired. Had enough of me, baby? <laughs> you know what, Grace? I'm kind of glad that highway was blocked tonight. They are? Mm -hmm. it gave us a chance to become kind of acquainted, didn't it? Kind of. You know, pulling in here three nights a week and pulling out 20 minutes later, I always left just... Wondering what you was like, Grace. I was wondering about you, too, Carl. You did? Yeah. But you needn't go blabbing anything to any of the other drivers. Well, what makes you think I'd do that? Ah, shoot, I know what you meant. Or like when you get together, you're worse than a woman. Well, not me, Grace. But I certainly don't want any of those other drivers, some of them especially, getting the idea that I'm going to serve them any more than what they order over the counter. Sure, I got you. But, um... Uh... You kind of liked me, didn't you, Greg? Maybe I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know the first thing I liked about you? What's that? Your hands. I like a man with big hands. You got everything, baby. One of the highway trucks just stopped by and said it won't be long now. Oh, I hope so. Everything peaceful? Yes, Will. Cowboy. If you're holding any grudges against me, I think you ought to ask yourself what you'd have done in my place. Now, I couldn't let you just carry off that little lady without stopping you, could I? Could I? I don't feel like talking, mister. Well, I couldn't. I think you also ought to remember that this little lady, if she wanted to, could press charges against you and send you to the penitentiary for violation of the Man Act. The what act? The Man Act. You took a woman across the state line against her will. That'd be a serious charge, Bo. <laughs> I loved her. Well, that don't make no difference. A man's got a right to things he loves. Not unless he deserves them. I'm a hard-working man. I own me my own ranch. I got $6,000 in the bank. A man don't deserve the things he loves unless he can be a little humble about getting them. I ain't getting down on my knees and beg. Being humble ain't the same as being wretched. <laughs> I had to learn that, too. I wasn't as old as you. Only, I stole horses instead of women, because you could sell horses. <laughs> well, one time I stole a horse off the wrong man, the Reverend Hezekiah Pearson. Well, I never thought I'd get mine from a preacher, but he was very fair. He'd give me every chance to put myself clear. But I wouldn't admit that that horse was his. Well, finally, he'd done the only thing left. He threshed me to within an inch of my life. And I never forgot, because... It's the first time in my life I had to admit that I was wrong. And I was miserable. Well, finally, after a few days, I decided I'd go face the man and tell him how I felt. After that, I felt different. I joined his church, and him and me was bosom pals until he died a few years ago. Has he done what I asked him to? Not yet, Chair. What are you so scared for? Who says I'm scared? You give me your word. I'm going to do it if you just give me time. It, but it ain't going to count unless you mean it. I'll mean it. Well, all right, then. Go ahead. <clears throat> Miss, I want to apologize. What for? Well, for causing such a commotion. You needn't apologize to me, cowboy. I like a good fight. You're welcome at Grace's Diner anytime. And I mean anytime. Thanks. 
Must have acted like a hoodlum. I apologize. Well, it's all right. Thank you, miss. I'm awful sorry we never got to see your rope tricks. Oh, they ain't much. Have I got to wake up the professor to apologize to him? You can overlook the professor. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, Bo. I just can't do Why it. Why not? She'd have no respect for me now. She saw me beat. You give me your promise. You owe that gal an apology, and whether you got beat or not, you're gonna say it to her, or I ain't gonna let you back on that bus. Go on, Bo. Go on. I'll, I'll try. <clears throat> Cherry? Yeah? It wasn't right of me to treat you the way I did. Dragging you on the bus and trying to make you marry me whether you wanted to or not. You think you can ever forgive me? I guess I've been treated worse in my life. Look, now, I got you here, and I think I ought to get you back in good style, so take Sheriff this. Sheriff make you do that? No, by God, he didn't say nothing about my giving you money. It's his idea, miss, but I think it's a good one. <laughs> you don't have to give me that much. I want you to have it. Thanks. I could sure use it. And I wish you good luck, Cherry. Honest, I do. I wish you the same, Bo. Well, I guess I said about everything there is to be said. So, uh, so long. So long, Bo. It wasn't so hard now, was it, son? I'm going to break wild horses and do that again. <laughs> How's your headache, Grace? Huh? A while back, you said you had a headache. Oh, it's fine now. Thank you, Will. Did you have a nice walk, huh? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I think you ought to go upstairs because somebody took your overshoes and left them outside the door of Grace's apartment. <laughs> you nosy old snoop. <laughs> Give me a cup of that coffee, Grace, and one of them sweet rolls. <laughs> Come on, Bo, let's go over to the counter and have ourselves a bite of breakfast. I ain't hungry. Well, how about a cup of coffee? Couldn't get it down. Well, what's the matter now, Bo? You ought to be pretty happy, the sheriff letting you go and all. I might as well have stayed in that jail. Oh, <laughs> what kind of way is that to talk? That bus will be leaving in a few minutes. We'll be back at the ranch in a couple of days. I don't care if I never see that dang place again. Bo, you spent half your life earning the money to build it up. That's the lonesomest damn place I ever did see. Well, I never thought so. That'd be like going back to a graveyard. Bo, Hank and Orville is telling me about the new school marm lives over at the Stebbins place. They say she's a real looker. I ain't interested in no school marm. Bo, give yourself time. You're young. You can find lots of gals. Gals that'll love you too. I want Cherry. Bo, go on, Verge, go get yourself something to eat. Look up, the lines are up. Grace's diner. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, I'll tell him. The roads are clear, but you gotta put your chains on because it's pretty slick. Oh, God damn. The roads are clear, folks. Bus will be pulling out just so they can get the chains on. That'll take about 20 minutes. Unless someone wants to help me. I'll help you, Carl. Good. something I want to tell you and it, it's kind of personal and, and uh, it's kind of embarrassing but I'm not the kind of girl you thought I was what do you mean Cherry well uh, some folks would say I led a pretty wicked life and uh, 
I guess I have. What are you trying to tell me, Cherry? Well, I, I just figured that seeing as you met me at the Blue Dragon, that you took it for granted. I had other boyfriends before you. You had? Yes, Bob. Quite a few. Yeah. Virgil told me that you did, but I wouldn't believe you. Well, it's true. So, you see, I'm not the kind of girl that you want to be with at all. Dr. Lyman? Dr. Lyman? Mm -hmm. you. Dear girl, what a sweet awakening. How do you feel? That's not a polite question. <laughs> How long have I been sleeping here? Oh, a couple hours. Sometimes nature blesses me with a total blackout. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything after we started our performance. How were we? Marvelous. Oh, I'm glad. Now, I would take that cup of coffee you were trying to force on me last night. Okay. Can I get you something to eat? No, nothing to eat. Oh, please, Dr. Lyman. You really must eat something. Must I? Yes, please. Very well. For your sweet sake, I will have two three-minute eggs and toast and orange juice. But I'm doing this for you, my dear. Just for you. Bo, I'm gonna go out and help that driver with the chains. You stay here and take care of that hand. Cherry, would I be molesting you if I was to say something? No. Well, since you brought the subject up, You're the first gal I ever had anything to do with. By God, I never thought I'd hear myself say that. But I said it. Well, I, I never would have guessed it, Bo. You see, I spent all my life on that ranch, and uh, I guess I didn't know much about women, because they're different from men. Naturally. And every time I got around a, a, a girl, I, I got kind of scared, and I, I didn't know how to act. It was aggravating. You wasn't scared with me, Bo. Well, when I come in that nightclub place, you was singing, and you smiled at me when you was singing. You winked at me a couple of times, remember? Yeah, I, I remember. Well, I guess I am kind of green, but no gal ever done that to me before. So I thought you were singing your songs just for me. Well, I, I was kind of attracted. Anyway, you, you were so pretty. And you just seemed so kind of warm-hearted and sweet that I felt like I could love you. And I did. Paul? Do you think that you really did love me? Why, Cherry, I couldn't be familiar with a gal that I didn't love. Bus headed west. All aboard. Next stop, Topeka. How you doing now, cowboy? Well, I ain't the happiest critter that was ever born. But just because you ain't happy now, that don't mean you ain't gonna be happy tomorrow. You feel like shaking hands now, cowboy? Well... Go on, boy. He's just trying to be friends. I don't mind. I want you to remember, no hard feelings. So long. So long. Well, I'm going home, Grace. I'll see you Monday. Good night, Will. Thanks for the help, Will. I'll be pulling out just as soon as I make out this report. Montana ain't a bad place, man. Nice fella, Bo. Maybe I'll think so someday. Well, we better be getting on the bus. 
Cherry? Hi, Bo. Cherry, I know I said I wouldn't molest you, but if you used to give your permission, it'd be all right. I'd like to kiss you goodbye. You would? Well, I'd like for you to kiss me goodbye, Bo. I really would. <laughs> um, Bo? Bo, don't you think it should be kind of different this time? Oh. Golly, when, uh, when you kiss someone for serious, it's kind of scary, ain't it? Yeah, it is. It don't look like he's molesting her now. I think I could honestly tell you that that was the most delicious breakfast I've ever eaten. But it wouldn't be much of a compliment, because I, I've eaten so few breakfasts. <laughs> That's my favorite meal. My dear, let us give up our little spree, shall we? You don't want to go traipsing over the streets of your state capital with an old reprobate like me. Whatever you say. I'll just continue on my way to Denver. Sure, it's for the best. Anyway, I, I've certainly enjoyed knowing you. Thank you. Sometimes it is so gratifying to feel that one is doing the right thing. I wonder that I don't choose to always. What do you mean? I'm just rambling. It does occur to me, though, that I'm going to be in the vicinity of Topeka. I might should stop off at that, that hospital and seek some advice. Sometimes their patients come in here. They look perfectly all right to me. Many of my friends have been heading for years that I should be psychoanalyzed. I don't know whether they have my best interest at heart or their own. Golly, I don't see anything the matter with you. No, young people never do. However, I don't think I care to be psychoanalyzed. I rather cherish myself as I am. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, you were the loveliest Juliet since Miss Jane Cowell. Thank you, Dr. Lyman. I feel it's been an honor to know you. You're the smartest man I've ever met. The smartest? Really, you are. Oh, yes, my dear, I am terribly smart. Wouldn't it have been lovely to be intelligent? You know what I heard about a professor? The detective in the bus terminal in Kansas City is a buddy of mine. And he pointed a professor out before he got on the bus. And you know what he said? He said the police in Kansas City picked the professor up for loitering around the schools. Honest? And then they checked his record out and found out he'd been in trouble several times for getting involved with young girls. Oh, my God. Did you tell Will? Sure, I told him. They ain't got anything on the professor now, so there's nothing Will could do. And what gets me is, why does he call himself a doctor? Is he some kind of phony? No, Carl. He's <laughs> doctor of philosophy. Well, what's that? It's the very highest degree there is for scholarship. You'd think you'd have philosophy enough to stay out of trouble. <laughs> Sorry to see me go, baby. No. Told you I was tired. You know, sometimes I get to thinking just what the hell good is marriage. I had to put up with the same woman every day, look at her in the morning, try to get along with her when she's got a bad disposition. <laughs> this way suits me fine. Yeah, well, I ain't got no complaints. <laughs> Incidentally, Carl, are you married? Who told you that? Now, who it's said that? Relax, now, you tell me relax, I'm going to fix her. Just relax. I'll see you the day after tomorrow. I might be surprised. What can happen in 20 minutes? All aboard. He never did say whether he was married or not.
Cherry? Yeah? I was just talking to my buddy. He thinks I'm virgin enough for both of us. Cherry, I like you like you are. I don't care how you got that way. <laughs> oh, Bo, that's the sweetest, tenderest thing anyone ever said to me in my whole life. You know, it's awful hard when a fellow's been turned down once to get up enough guts to try again. <laughs> you don't need guts, Bo. I don't? No, that's one thing you don't need. Well, I ain't got none now anyhow, so I, I guess I just better tell you how I feel in my heart. Yeah? I still wish you was coming back to the ranch with me more than anything I know. You do? Yeah, I do. Well, I'd go anywhere in the world with you right now. Anywhere at all. You would? Yeah. You would? <laughs> I knew it was going to turn out like this all along. <laughs> you hear that, Burns? We're getting married after all! <laughs> Jerry's going back with me. Oh, isn't it wonderful when someone so awful turns out to be so nice? <laughs> I'm getting married. We're going to Montana. Hey, all aboard, for Christ's sake! Come on, bird, you old raccoon. Hey, Mo, Mo, listen to me a minute. Now, God, dog, don't we're wasting enough time no, already. Mo, Mo, be quiet a minute and listen to me. Now, you, you don't need me no more. I ain't going. You ain't what? I, I ain't going with you, Bo. Well, what do you know about that? It's best I don't. It's just one blame catastrophe after another. <laughs> I got this other job in mind. The feed's mighty good, and I'll be looking after the cattle. I, I meant to tell you about it before now. I can't believe you leave your old sidekick. Verge, you're joking, No, man. no, I ain't joking, Bo. Well, I'll be it. Verge, I'd like it if you'd come with us. I liked you for I liked him. <laughs> you know, Cherry likes you, Verge. It just don't make sense you're not coming. Well, I'm doing the right thing. I know I am. Well, who's going to look after the cattle? Hank, every bit as good as I ever was. Oh, Verge, I don't know why you have to pull a stunt like this. Well, it's, 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 get, get going, get on, get on your bus. That's... Doggone it, Verge, you're my buddy. I ain't gonna let you go. You're coming with Cherry. No! Uh, just, just let me be, Bo. Bo. Bo, you can't do it that way. You just can't. If you don't want to come, you can't make him. Cherry, it just don't make sense. He's not coming. It's plumb crazy. Bo, sometimes people got their own reasons for doing things. Oh. I just hate to think of getting along without old Verge. Oh, shoot. In a couple of weeks, you'll never miss me. Oh, Verge. Go, go on. Get on your bus. That driver's not going to wait forever. Verge, will you come visit us? Yeah, I'll, I'll be up in the summer. Where are you going to be? Well, I don't have time to give the address right now. I'll, I'll write it to you. It's, it's a nice place, though. M mighty nice. Now, get, get along with you now. <laughs> So long, old boy. Bye, Bo. Come on, Cherry, let's uh, make it fast.
Mister, we gotta close up now if Ellen and me are gonna get any rest. We open again at 8 o'clock when the day girl comes on. And the next bus through is at 8.45 to Albuquerque. Albuquerque? That's as good a place as any. Poor Dr. Lyman. Let's see, did you hear what Carl told me about that guy? No, what did he say, Grace? Well, according to Carl, they run him out of Kansas City. I don't believe it. Well, Carl heard it from the detective at the bus terminal. What did Dr. Lyman do? Well, lots of old fogies like him. They can't let young girls alone. So it's a good thing you didn't go to Topeka with him. Do you think he wanted to make love to me? Well, I don't think he meant to play hopscotch. <laughs> Gee. Next time a guy comes in here and gets fresh with you, you just tell Yank Grace. I guess I'm kind of stupid. Oh, everybody's got to learn. Now, Monday for sure, I got to remember to order me some cheese. I'll remind you. Oh, honey. I could just kill Will Masters for saying anything about Carl and me. I didn't want you to know. I don't see why I shouldn't know, Grace. I don't want to be a baby forever. No, of course you don't. But you're a kid, and I don't want to set no example or anything. So is there any way you could overlook it and not think bad of me? Sure, Grace. Because I'm a restless sort of a woman. <laughs> and I just got to have me a man every now and again to keep from getting grouchy. <laughs> Grace. Just think. He wanted to make love to me. And start getting stuck on yourself. <laughs> not Grace. It's just nice to know someone can feel that way. You're not going to have any trouble. You just wait till you get to college and you meet all those cute boys. All right, I'll wait. <laughs> you can go home, Nan. I'm just going to empty the garbage. Okay. Night. Good night, Grace. I'll see you Monday. It was very nice knowing you, Virgil. And I just loved your music. Thank you, Miss. Good night. Yes, sir. I gotta close up now. But is there any place warm I can stay till eight o'clock? Well, now that the police station is closed, I can't think of anything. Unless you want to take a chance, wake up the man who runs the hotel. No, I wouldn't want to be in any trouble. Well, there's a bus through here to Kansas City. In a few minutes, I could put out the sign that stop. No, there's no point going back there. Well, then I'm sorry, mister. I guess you're just left out in the cold. <laughs> well, that's what happens to some people. <laughs>